In this video, we will build an advanced foundry, figure out what each block is responsible for, learn how to transport liquids and also get liquids from mobs. And before we start, I want to thank the following subscribers for their cool comments. By the way, you can also get here. Subscribe so as not to miss new interesting series, and we are starting. To create a large foundry, you have to make a foundry controller first. It is made from a fired heater, which you place in a fired casting tank and fill it with 4 ingots of molten copper. Molten copper can be made into a primitive smelter, which was described in the last video. Next, you make a burnt drain, a burnt ingot tank, a burnt casting table, an ordinary casting tank, a burnt tap. As the base blocks, use the burnt blocks, where the bottom part of the foundry is written. Do not confuse them with burnt blocks, which are needed for another multi-structure, foundry furnaces. Then there are two additional blocks, a burnt gutter and a burnt tunnel, which I will tell you about a little later. We are starting construction. We will install some kind of foundation block, we will have it fired brick, but you can use others. Next, we put the controller in half and the burnt drain. I ask you to pay attention so that this side looks inside our construction here. Well, now, in fact, we have to install a burnt tank, it is needed for fuel so that our stove works, and some other block that can become part of the foundry. This is a burnt plum. It allows you to load liquids or unload liquids from the stove. This can be easily done if you connect a pipe or a tap to one of the sides where there is such a black square hole. At the moment I am connecting two taps to the burnt drain, which will pour liquids onto the casting table and tank. We use lava or fiery blood as fuel, I'll tell you about it later. I throw ore into this slot and it starts to melt slowly. As a result, we get a melt. Then we will pour it into a special casting mold by clicking the PCM on the tap. It was a foundry of minimal dimensions, let's now make a normal large foundry that will meet all our needs. The working area of our stove was 3x3. Three three. Then everything is according to the standard. Controller, tank, burnt drain, another drain, burnt gutter, and burnt tunnel. Next, we complete our design and, accordingly, we will put a casting table and a casting tank and connect it all to the tap. The stove is completed and now it has 9 working slots. And the stove is assembled and working. Next, let's talk about the burnt gutter. With this block, you can load and unload resources through funnels or pipes. And, actually, this is how you can automate. The larger half differs from the primitive one in that in the primitive half you get one ingot and a couple of nuggets from one ore. And in a large smelter, you will already get two ingots from one ore, which is more profitable. In the large half, you can store several liquids at once. Liquids can also combine to form new alloys. Pay attention to the fact that the downstream liquid is poured out. If you need some liquid that is higher than it, just click on it in the oven, it will move down and you can pour it out. The burnt tunnel is needed in order to filter liquids. If there are a lot of liquids in your stove, you don't want to constantly click and select a certain liquid to work with, you can set up a burnt tunnel by simply installing a bucket with a certain liquid in it. And now only this liquid will pour out of it. Burnt tunnel in addition to buckets of liquid, you can also place special copper vessels, which are added by the Tinker Contract mod. Copper vessels, as well as buckets, can be used to carry some liquids, but they have a very small capacity and you can actually hold only one molten ingot. By the way, you can make not such a stove as mine, but wider or even higher, increasing its capacity. And I advise you to use these ladders, they are very convenient if you need to climb up a high smelter. Also, there is a new mechanics in the Tinker contract, which is called multi-layer casting. To do this, you must put the part on the casting table and fill it with the appropriate material. As a result, you will receive a new part. Furnaces can melt mobs in their heads, getting the appropriate liquids. For example, you can melt a resident, a champion, or a witch by getting emeralds, fire blood from ifrits, milk from skeletons. I advise you to test your creativity, there are many options. Tinker Construction has its own gutter system that will allow you to transport liquids from one point to another. Install several gutters and right-click on one of the sides. You will find that they start to extend, 
thus, you can combine several greedy groups. But pay attention to these arrows here, they show the direction of movement of the liquid. If you want to change the direction, right click on them. Complaints are able to fill the tanks that are located under them. To do this, you need to right click on the gutter under which the tank is installed and it will connect to it. Actively using Plavini, you will probably have a lot of molds and you will need to constantly change them or store them somewhere. To do this, I recommend that you use a mold box, only molds made of gold can fit into it, that is, reusable, sandy ones will not fit there. And here's the recipe for this block. And with you was a midwife, thank you for watching. Bye.